Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I want to give you all an update on the use of common drugs like metformin, ivermectin, and fluvoxamine for the treatment of COVID-19. If you've watched my channel for any length of time, I've been so hopeful that a repurposed safe, cheap, and effective drug would be shown to treat COVID-19. I've spoken about two of these drugs, ivermectin and fluvoxamine, several times on my channel. And initially there was so much hope and encouraging data about both of them that I prescribed these medications for a time early on in the COVID pandemic. But now we have the results from a recent double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trial called COVID-OUT that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in mid-August 2022. There's more disheartening news about ivermectin and fluvoxamine, but there's interesting and possibly promising data about metformin. Let's take a look at the information from this study together. This trial involved over 1,300 patients who were all overweight or obese who had a positive COVID-19 test. 52% of the participants had been vaccinated against COVID-19. The main result they were studying was abnormal pulse oximetry, which can signify not enough oxygen getting into the blood from the lungs, ER visits, hospitalizations, and death. The dose of ivermectin given was 0.39 to 0.47 milligrams per kilogram per day, and it was given for three days. The dose of fluvoxamine was 50 milligrams twice a day for 14 days, and the dose of metformin was increased over six days to 1,500 milligrams a day for 14 days. Let's take a look at this table with the results from the study. They posted their results in terms of odds ratios. The closer the odds ratio is to one, the more likely the intervention, which in this case is the medication given, does not have an effect. So you can see right off the bat that being given ivermectin did not have any effect on the worsening of COVID-19 illness. Next, let's look at fluvoxamine. And again, it's very close to one, meaning that taking fluvoxamine did not have any effects on the COVID-19 infection. But interestingly enough, metformin may have shown a small effect. An odds ratio of 0.84 means that taking metformin may reduce the odds of worsening of COVID-19 by 16% compared with someone who does not take this medication. Yes, it's a small effect, but it is an effect, although it was not statistically significant. But when they removed the endpoint of hypoxemia that was reported by patients and used more objective criteria of ER visits, hospitalization, or death, metformin's effect seemed to be even greater and was statistically significant while the ivermectin and fluvoxamine groups showed an even less beneficial effect. Looking at this data, the odds ratio of 0.58 means that patients that took 1,500 milligrams of metformin reduced the odds of going to the hospital or dying by 42% than those patients who did not take metformin. So this simply means a larger dedicated study with metformin should be done. Some caveats about this study are that proponents of ivermectin will say that this study did not give a high enough dose of ivermectin for a long enough period of time. On the FLCCC website, they recommend a dose of at least 0.4 to 0.6 milligrams per kilogram per day of ivermectin that should be given for at least five days. This study gave only 0.39 to 0.47 milligrams per kilogram per day for only three days. So some patients received the high enough dose, but none of them received it for the correct amount of time, according to proponents of ivermectin. But nonetheless, this study does cast doubt on its use for early COVID infections. And if you remember the encouraging data on fluvoxamine from the TOGETHER trial, that showed a 32% reduction of hospitalization in patients with COVID-19, they used a dose of 100 milligrams twice a day of fluvoxamine for 10 days. The investigators in this study chose a lower dose of fluvoxamine because 100 milligrams twice a day of fluvoxamine can have some side effects like nausea, diarrhea, and headache that cause people to stop taking it. So if I decide to prescribe fluvoxamine, I will encourage the patient to take 100 milligrams twice a day, not 50 milligrams twice a day. I look forward to more data on all of these medications and hope that more well-controlled studies will be done. 
But as I've mentioned before, now that we have expensive medications on the market like Paxlovid that have been proven to work, I know there is less desire for any institution or pharmaceutical company to take on the cost of a placebo-controlled study if the medication that's being studied is cheap, like metformin is. But it's important to continue to find cheap treatments for countries that cannot afford expensive medications, and for the time when SARS-CoV-2 may develop resistance against the antiviral Paxlovid. Thanks for joining me.